Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. Hi, I'm Jessica Fast. We are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing. And today we're talking about what to do if you don't know your genre. Yes, but after you've started writing your book, right? Yes. So our, we actually had a blog comment. This is it all comes from a watcher and reader and commenter. So thank you. Um, and they asked, what if you started your book, but you aren't sure what genre it is? Yeah, that's, that's a big conundrum. one. Yeah, it's a, it's a big one for sure. So the first thing I want to say is that you should not be querying. You should not be querying if you don't know your book genre. You have more work to do. And I would even say maybe keep writing, but with the idea that it can change. Um, I can can you, you hear the that. voice now? stop writing my book is special not all books have to have a genre what if i'm not writing in genre that is my least favorite argument ever no what? not all books have to have a genre. then truthfully what are you doing like <laughs> publishing is a business i know you've heard us say it a million times before but every business has to have a market who is your market there are very very few readers who read everything i don't you don't. No. You and I read probably more than most people, presumably, because we are in the business. And there are genres that I just typically, there are genres I just don't read. And there are genres I typically don't read. But it also and, doesn't make sense. It doesn't, like I have <laughs> never, it down. <laughs> I have never read something, watched something, listened to music that couldn't be in some way categorized into one of that industry genres, I, 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 just, I couldn't, like I couldn't, I would be hard pressed to come up with one. Even the most genre bending books or movies are slotted somewhere mm -hmm. so that consumers can find them. That's the point. That is the point. You don't mm -hmm. walk into a bookstore and just be like, oh, I'm going to go over there and just sort of hope I find a mystery. They are clearly- right. I'm going to go to the science fiction section and hope I find a mystery. Right, like they are clearly like, categorized for ease and for marketing purposes too. Anyway, I'm getting fired up, but I just don't think that argument makes sense. Um, um, our, I think our, our best advice to start off with is you need to read more. Yeah, and you need to read outside of what you're reading because yeah. just because you write read mystery and sit down to write a mystery we, doesn't mean that you're a mystery writer. And this is sort of, the weird thing that I, I think very few writers are told, you know, you're told to write what you know, which you're probably hopefully doing, because if you are only a mystery reader, you're probably sitting down to write what you know, which are mysteries, right? But maybe you're not a mystery writer. And maybe unknowingly, you found yourself veering into romance. And you're like, well, maybe I'm writing a romance, but you wouldn't know that if you're not reading romance. So you got to read the romance if you think you're veering off, veering off your first play on genre. The best thing a writer can be is well-read. Mm -hmm. Not just well-read, like you're saying, not just well-read in your genre, but also you learn things from other genres that you would not learn from just writing your genre. The, the, the key to sort of transcending a genre is knowing what happens in, liter in literature all over the place, right? Like people, a lot, there's a lot of talk about like genre blending lately, and you can't do that if you only read one. Yeah, you know what's interesting is a lot of my authors who read heavily in a certain genre and then started writing in that genre, then also stopped reading heavily in that genre because they're now writing in it, they're entrenched in it. It's not that they don't read at all. They're very aware of what's happening in their market, but they start reading new things and that's when their career grows because they, they branch out their reading into different areas and now their writing automatically follows that course because they're trying new things, which is when we're getting all that genre bending stuff. Yeah, and what you're doing is you're making connections back to everything you read, you're making a connection back to your own writing, either mm -hmm. consciously or subconsciously. You're making a connection about what your book is like, what your book isn't like, you're understanding the market, you're learning about comp like potential comp titles. Mm -hmm. That is what you're doing and then as you're buying or, or finding those books in the library however you're coming across those books you're also starting to understand how they're categorized how they're marketed how they're sold and um, what their readers expect yeah so the whole process of reading as a writer 
is informative, yeah. not only just to writing, but also to the industry and marketing in general. So. And I think that if you started your book and you aren't sure what genre it is, you need to figure that out at some point. You also need to accept, which goes back to another video we've done, that if you're writing a book that when you're done doesn't fit into a genre or you can't place or you don't know the market for, then that's probably not a book you're ready to query. And at the very least, you need to know who the market is for your book. If you walked into a bookstore or a library, you need to know where you expect your readers to find your book. If you don't know that, then I don't know that. And the publisher doesn't know that. Yeah, I will go so far as to say there's no such book that appeals to every single reader. There, there's just no such thing. Like they don't, not every reader reads every book. So I love when we get those queries that are like, it appeals to men and women and young people and old people. And I'm like, maybe it has that crossover potential, but it doesn't reach every single reader. So you need to dial it's it. For, it's for ages 12 to 92. No, it right. is no. not. I ask you, some of the books that you read, would you give them to your niece and nephew, your kids? Your, would you do that? Would you give them to your grandparent? You wouldn't, like so many. And also just think, I don't know about you, but as my life has changed, so do my reading interests. Yeah. There are certain books that, certain types of books, certain genres, certain books that I loved that now I would have a hard time getting through. It's just not, you know, and I think the same holds true of television and any of our entertainment. It changes as we change. It's, it's only natural. And it interacts with the world too. Yeah. It's changing as the world changes, so. Yeah. Um, and this is where comp titles can be so important too, right? Like, like no, reading helps you find comp titles and comp titles help you know where your book belongs and what genre it is. Yeah, and you know, when we just sort of pick a title and we're not only misrepresenting our book, but we're clearly misunderstanding the market. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, another avenue for figuring it all out is your critique partners. Hopefully, presumably by now, you have connected with other writers who maybe are writing the same genre, well, maybe writing the same kind of book that you're writing because you're not sure on your genre yet, um, but hopefully you've connected with other writers. Their knowledge, their perspective, their reading history, th what they bring to the table can be her very helpful in defining where you want to take your book, even if it's yeah. just where you don't want to take your book. Yeah, uh, And I think having that conversation with other writers can be really illuminating and really educational in terms of learning the market. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, and our last piece of advice, if you're still not sure, but you should be doing this anyway, so do it. Uh, research the industry, research publishing, yeah. read the deal announcements that are coming out. You can subscribe to, I'm pretty sure Publishers Lunch is free. And no, you can, you can get a free version, not the full version, but I believe at least you used to be able to get a free shortened right. version. Yeah, Publishers, yeah, if you're writing Kidlet, Publishers Weekly Children's Bookshelf is free. Um, following people on Twitter, everybody loves to post a screen grab. It's like the thing to do. So you'll see them naturally. Um, Look at how, like we mentioned, look at how the bookstores are shelving the books they stock. Follow publishers on Instagram and Twitter. See how they're marketing their books. That can be really helpful. Um, I think all of that will build a better eye for how a book is sold. Yeah. And I would say go to a bookstore. And I know this is tough because not everybody lives in an area with a bookstore near them. But if you can take a field trip, or plan one when you're somewhere where you know a bookstore is, plan half a day to go and really peruse the bookstore, see what's on their tables, see how they're shelving things, see what's on the shelves. I think that's much more powerful than searching online or on Amazon under the genres. I think actually seeing how the store works is a huge part of finding where you fit. Yeah. And I mean, if you can't make it to a bookstore, try an indie bookstore's website. See how they do things on their mm, website. True, true. Yeah. So once you have come to a conclusion on what you are writing, your age group, your genre, you need to revisit it all, I think. I think you need to yeah. revisit your what you've written so far, revisit your query letter, your synopsis, revisit where you thought your book was going, and yeah. look at it in that new light. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really revisit it and rewrite it. 
<laughs> you know, like I said, if if you thought you were writing a genre and discovered that your book isn't that, it doesn't mean that it automatically became that. You probably really need to now take the genre as you understand it and rework the book. Because if you didn't know you were doing that, you may need to really research hard through organization websites, through critique groups and all sorts of things to figure out why your book is that and what you need to do to really make it that. If you followed all of our advice in this video, you're coming back to that book a completely new writer. Mm. You need to treat it as such, so. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Well, we hope this was helpful. Yeah. We hope everybody knows what they're writing now and who they're writing it for. Um, in the meantime, you can watch tons of our videos. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and we will be back here next week. Bye.